Hey, what's going on guys? It's Matt back with another video here. Today I'm reviewing this lens, the 10 millimeter F8 fisheye lens from Astrohori. This is an ultra wide angle pancake lens. It has a fixed aperture of F8, so you cannot stop it down. You cannot open it up, always F8. With a lens like this, it's almost difficult to keep your fingers out of the frame, even just gripping the side of the camera. Let's jump into the studio real quick. We'll talk about the build quality of this lens, and then we'll come back out here in the real world to talk about the image quality later on. This is what the lens looks like on a Fujifilm X-T3. As you can see, it's very tiny on there. It's quite literally the same size as a body cap for the Fujifilm system. So instead of having a body cap in your bag, you can just throw in this 10 millimeter F8 and have a little fun extra option in your kit. Weirdly enough, the included cap says Rockstar instead of Astrohori. I got a comment saying that um, the R in Astrohori stands for Rockstar, but I think the case is that they just used to be called Rockstar and rebranded to Astrohori. On the front of the lens, we get some extra information. The R presumably standing for Rockstar, the 10 and 8 for 10 millimeters F8, ED probably for extra low dispersion element, and I don't know how, but somehow the lens is backside illuminated in CMOS, so somehow Astrohori fit that into here, so that's kind of a crazy feat. I have no clue why they put that in the front of the lens, but they did. When you're trying to take the lens off the camera because there's nothing to grab onto because there's no aperture ring and only this focus ring and it's so small you have to twist the lens all the way to infinity because otherwise it's like impossible to get off <laughs> in case i didn't mention it's a fixed aperture of f8 you cannot darken or brighten it so it's f8 at all times there are no filter threads on here so you can't put any sort of filter on it so that kind of limits its use even though it's already very limited with the focal length and aperture and there is a very, very tiny rear element because of the dark aperture. No EXIF data as you would expect for a very cheap third-party lens like this. And that is basically it. This lens is dead simple. Let's get on to the image quality. So the first glaring thing about the image quality of this lens is that it's very wide and there's some distortion because it's a fisheye lens. So just to show you on screen, this is this 10 millimeter lens versus the Fujifilm 10 to 24 millimeter lens at 10 millimeters. First of all, just to show you if this 10 millimeters is accurate to that other lens's 10 millimeters. And second of all, I wanna show you the difference between the nature of this lens being a fisheye and that 10 to 24 millimeter being rectilinear meaning that the the corners don't have that bowing that roundness they're straight lines i want to go inside inside this uh this corn crib here because I think that would be a cool place to tell you about my first gripe of this lens so I underestimated how hard it would be to get inside of this corn crib in this small hole but uh, we're here now I just thought it'd be cool to be in here because we have these these leading lines and you can see the distortion as things get near the edge of the frame, that bowing, I just thought it would be a cool thing to show. So my first gripe with this lens is the fact that it does not have a filter thread. So I first thought because it's 10 millimeters, it's so wide, there would be vignetting with any filter you put on it. But then I thought my 10 to 24 millimeter lens, you can put filters on it. And unless you're stacking two or three, you don't really get vignetting. And then I also saw there's a Mark II or a Mark III version of this lens that does have a filter thread size. So first of all, I don't know why Astrohori would send me this old version of the lens without that, especially if they updated that problem. And second of all, it's just a lot less usable without a filter thread because like I'm out here filming video right now. I can't even film in log because the base ISO is too high in order to get a proper shutter speed for motion blur. If that's important to you, you usually have to use an ND filter if you're filming outside. Because you don't have that capability, I had to take it out of log in order to get my ISO low enough. I'm at ISO 320. That's not ideal to not get the full dynamic range that my camera is capable of because of that limitation. So. I wish there was the ability to put filters on it. Right now the sun is coming out and I need to raise the shutter speed. I have to get rid of, forget about my friendly motion blur type thing just to get proper exposure. But uh, one of the biggest drawbacks obviously of this lens is that it's a fixed f8 aperture that makes it practically useless in low light unless you're doing some pretty heavy handed noise reduction, which is not undoable with today's AI noise reduction just not ideal. Unless you're doing long exposures on a tripod, that's totally doable, but the nature of this being a fisheye, you're probably not gonna be using it very often for that. I'll put a picture on screen of my dog Ace here. I took at minimum focus distance on this lens. The minimum focus distance of 0.3 meters is really not very close, and that's really accentuated by the fact that it's 10 millimeters, so it feels even farther away. I do wish it focused closer. That's one of the nice things about my 10 to 24 millimeter Fuji lens is that it focuses so close to those wide angles. <sighs> no one ever talks about how hard it is 
to walk and talk at the same time in a vlog. I'm constantly having to catch my breath. Am I just out of shape? I don't know. You might be able to see here, the flaring on this lens is not the best. There's no sun stars because there's no aperture blades, so you can't have sun stars. Not a lot of dynamic range in the sky because I'm not shooting in log, not by choice. I have some examples of this lens flares pretty bad, which is kind of to be expected. You can't really mount a lens hood on it because of how small it is and usually small lenses flare. Also because the lens is so simple, whenever you focus it, you just move all the optics at once. So if you're focusing in the middle of a video shot and you have flare at the same time, you see that flare circle around as you change your focus, which is a little bit distracting. A couple weeks ago when I first got this lens, I took it out to Shingletown Gap, which is just a local nature place to go on a walk. And when I was out there, it was before all the snow, I'll just show some clips now. I got some photo and video examples while I was out there. It was a lot of fun. But I did notice when I was out there and I was doing some vlogging samples, the Ibis, I don't know if we'll be able to get a sample now, especially when I was walking a little bit more carelessly. I did notice that maybe the image circle is a bit small because the Ibis trying to stabilize the footage, I saw some dark corners at some points. You can see a little bit of flaring there. It's not the worst thing in the world. It just doesn't look super awesome. It's super fun. If you don't mind your arm being in the frame, that looks a little dumb sometimes. I should have had like a tripod, but then it'd be so wide, it's almost a stupid amount of wideness. It looks pretty good handheld. It's not like I look so distorted, it look dumb. And because it can't focus close, I can't really get it in close enough where I do start looking a little goofy. My overall thoughts in this lens is that it is a bit of a one trick pony. Most photographers, when they talk about a fisheye lens, for good reason, they said to use them sparingly, it's because, I mean, this look is very distinct. Once you use it, you can tell, okay, that's a fisheye lens. There's this distortion and stuff going on. But if you want that look, if really you just want to experiment with 10 millimeters and having that ultra wide perspective on APS-C for a bargain price, less than $100, I think this is an $80 lens, this is a really good way to get that. It also could just serve as a body cap. I'll be transparent with you guys and let you know that Astrohori did send me this lens to review. I got it for free, but as with all my reviews, I'm being very honest with you about what I like and dislike about the lens. Otherwise, what's the point of me even having this channel if you can't believe what I have to say? But if you do want to pick up this lens, like I said, it's $80. If you want to just try out something fun, there's a link in the description that is an affiliate link. It helps out the channel. So hopefully I helped you out today by making this video. If that's the case, you can help me out by clicking that link. If you're going to buy the lens anyway, buy it through there. Help out the channel for me making this video, for coming out in the cold, trying to entertain and inform you. So leave a like, leave a comment down below. I hope to hear from you in the next one, guys. Let me know if you want more vlog style reviews. If you enjoyed this or if you want me to keep it in the studio. I don't know. I'm just trying out some stuff in 2024. See you in the next one, guys. Peace.